If you're gonna try to learn from the real righteous ones, those ones that built us and designed our character and they are the light that to that light we walk and they are the pillar of fire in front of our camp. If you will check their actions, you will see that all of them, with no exceptions, messed up big time. They failed huge failures. And we can go one after the other and you will see that each and every one of those huge righteous ones failed big time in his life. First man on earth, he sinned badly. First woman, she messed up big time. Their children, it was a horrible story. They killed each other. That's the first generation. Noah. He was the leader of his generation. He been saved based on his righteousness. He been saved from the flood. Now, after the flood, he start crying. After he been saved with the animals, he, with his family and the animals, he started to cry. The Creator told him, Ra'aya Shatya, you're a foolish leader, you're a fool. Now you're crying? After I brought down the flood and thousands of people died, every human being that lived on earth except of your family, they all died and drowned in the water. Now you are crying? You were supposed to cry before I brought the flood. I made you work for so many days that you will wake up to pray and you did not. You didn't pray for the people. Now you're crying? Look what a failure of Noah, Abraham Avinu, the head of our nation, that pillar of faith that no one can understand his greatness. Really? You know which horrible failure he had, for an example, in his life? That he doubt Hashem's faith and Hashem told him, because that you failed, I'm going to send all your children, all your seed, to Egypt to hundreds of years to be slaves over there and to die. So now that man of faith just realized that because of him hundreds and thousands of people are about to die. And 80% of Am Israel died in Egypt before the salvation and redemption that took place after hundreds of years. All that sorrow was the result of the failure of Abram. Now, what we saw about Abram, if you would hear about yourself that you messed up so badly that all of your legacy, all your future family are about to suffer something that's similar to the Holocaust, the horrible camps of work and death and violence and, and, and abusements, and they're all going to suffer because of you, what would you do? You would shoot yourself in the head. But Abram, he didn't bought no vodka and no scotch, and he didn't do no drugs. He did tshuva. He started doing tshuva. And that's the greatness of our ancestors. Moshe Rabbeinu, that man of God, Isha Elohim. You know he killed a man? Now you will say he killed someone. How would you feel if you would kill a man? Would you forgive yourself if you would kill a man? He killed a man. That person killed a man. That person failed in few places while trying to save his people. That person been betrayed by most of the rabbis that lived, most of his people. Rashi is saying that all the men suspected him of, for being with, his, with their wives. Everyone fought with him. Everyone hated him. Everyone were arguing with him. He was alone. He'd been kicked out of the palace that was his house. He couldn't grow up with his children, with, with, his, with his family. He was in the desert for 60 years. 10 years of his life he lived in prison. Jethro hold he, held him in prison in a pit for 10 years. Now you're talking about an ex-convict? -con -con 10 years in prison after killing a man and he becomes to be the leader of your nation. He needs to go back and to speak to Pharaoh. 
is that a prototype of a righteous man that you would imagine to yourself that you want to look up to? A person that spent 10 years in prison, a person that killed a man in the middle of a, of a street fight, a person that found himself 60 years alone in the desert, Shimshon, Samson, he saw a beautiful woman and he loved her and she was not Jewish but he loved him and he didn't know what to do and he converted her. If you would see some Goya non-Jewish woman and you would start now putting the effort to convert her and to make her Jewish just because that you liked her, you wouldn't hold yourself as righteous. You would judge yourself in a very negative way. You would say bad things about yourself on why you're doing it. But he was the eyes of Hashem in that generation. He was the potential Mashiach of his generation. He saved Am Israel from horrible decrees. You cannot understand the greatness of a person because of the low actions and the failures that he had to go through in his life. King David sent a man to the war because he wanted to marry his wife. And that man been killed. And he made sure that she, that, that soldier will write um, um, a, um, a get Piturin, that she will be divorced legally by the rules of the Torah. And he made it all perfect for himself to get married with him. But when he been rebuked by the prophet, by Natan Navi, he was a man enough to admit that he messed up, that he was wrong, that he failed, and he did tshuva. And when he did tshuva, then Batkol, a voice from heaven, been heard in the whole kingship of Israel, of Judah, and everyone heard that King David became become the fourth will of the holy chariot of heaven ahead to our ancestor ancestors greater than Abraham Isaac and Jacob why because he did tshuva all those righteous people you can find so many horrible lackings in their lives but it didn't stop them from working and fixing themselves and completing the mission that been set for them by the Creator.